Nearly everyone has seen Netflix's documentary, Tiger King. And if you're one of the few people who have not seen it yet, why haven't you? You've most likely been doing nothing these past few months. So just sit down and enjoy the show. And don't give me the excuse that you can't because you don't have a Netflix subscription, because there's a way around that. Step one, find a house which has Netflix. Step two, trespass. Hold, enter the household. Yeah, yeah. And step three, launch Tiger King. Fam, what are you doing here? You've oh, been shit. addicted for oh, three shit. months. Are you eating my chips? I'm gonna kill you. But anyway, in the show, it follows many people who own exotic cats and whatever crazy shit they do, such as a drug kingpin who is the closest person to becoming Tony Montana, a polygamous cult leader, and a gay cowboy who ran for president in 2016, who was also a polygamist. But I'm not going to dwell too long on those people. I'm here to talk about one of the other people in the show, Carol Baskin, an animal rights activist who owns Big Cat Rescue, a sanctuary for big cats in Florida. And she may have possibly killed her husband and possibly fed him to the tiger so she can inherit his millions of dollars. Maybe. But something has come out recently about Carol Baskin and Big Cat Rescue. They made a VR game. Yes, right now in the Oculus Store, there is a game called Big Cat Rescue, which was made by a VR slash AR educational studio called Xenial Digital, who are endorsed by Carol to make the Big Cat Rescue VR game. And judging by the store page and the article from the Big Cat Rescue website, this looks like to be a great educational tool to learn about some tigers and get up close to see some realistic models of them. So let's jump in and learn about some abnormally large house cats. Once you start the game, you have the choice between two, uh, I mean one cat to experience with, and once you choose the only option, you are dropped into a forest to track down a tiger and rescue it from a poacher trap. And by tracking down, the game really means find some blues clues, press a button, then watch a video about tiger shit until you find the tiger stuck in a snare and rescue it. Wait, that's it? Yep, this game, if you can even call it that, is basically a glorified YouTube playlist, with the only interactivity you have is near the end where you awkwardly hold your tools and press two buttons to save a tiger. Now that leaves us with a simple question, why is this a VR game when it barely uses VR's mechanics? That's a good question. I don't know. All the learning in this game comes from the videos, and no, I don't count the tiger section as learning when all you do is jab two objects into it and watch it awkwardly run up a hill. The only gain VR would have for something like this is being able to get up and close to a virtual tiger. Well then explain why the Big Cat Rescue YouTube channel has 38 VR videos that only require a smartphone to view, instead of a gaming computer with an expensive headset. Now, I'm not discrediting the information the game provides. Ever since I played the game, I know more about cat sh** than I ever did before. I just believe that an experience like this does not need to be a VR game, because of how little the game utilizes VR's mechanics. Now, just because the educational part of the game did not use the VR aspect of the game well, a new question emerges. Is Big Cat Rescue a good VR game? Oh, uh, you want an answer? Well, it's pretty obvious, right? No, it's not a good game at all. Example A, the exploration. Even though the forest looks like you'd explore the entire thing, you can't. There are no teleport zones surrounding the play area, making the whole experience going down a wide hallway with tiger facts sprinkled throughout. Well then screw you game, I'm gonna take my time and explore the area first before I submit to your videos. Alright, I think I've done enough exploring for now, time to go save that tiger. Yeah, if you go off the path the game wants you to take, then it starts bugging out and softlocks the game, preventing me from watching the video near the tiger and forcing me to watch the first few videos all over again. Because the developers did not bug test their game at all. Thank you, Xenio Digital. The presentation also looks like the developers put as little effort into this game as possible. The ranger station, the place where you start off at, looks like a building that hasn't finished rendering. And why the hell can I teleport inside of it, but I can't teleport there? And if it wasn't bad enough, many times throughout my playthrough I can see their lazy attempt to optimize the game, such as being able to see the shadow render distance only 20 meters away, rocks popping in and out in front of me, and even finding a floating rock one time. Recommending a 1070 graphics card? Bullshit. But Sam, this game is free on the Oculus Store. Why are you bashing a free VR game this hard? Because this game is supported by a multi-millionaire and it has the quality of someone's first attempt at making a game on Unity. As a VR game, it fails by being a buggy, boring, unoptimized mess that clearly did not have any testing before release. And even the main focus of teaching people about tigers fails because you can get the same experience from watching videos on YouTube. This game utterly fails at every goal it is trying to achieve. 
And the best part yet is that they believe this game deserves more content since one of the cats hasn't been added yet. This isn't a crappy AAA studio, this is Big Cat Rescue VR. Xenial Digital, fix your damn game before you release more content. Actually, while you're fixing it, make it an actual game with more interactivity than the try me button on a kid's toy at Target, instead of a soulless waste of hard drive space.